Every control on the APC is remappable, even shift and the bank select buttons. Now obviously you wouldn't want to remap those, and you probably wouldn't want to remap any of the controls over here because they operate on multiple banks. To give you an example, this button right here will launch clip one on track two if I move over a bank, now it'll launch clip one on track three. If I remap that button to something else, it'll no longer control clips in any bank. It'll simply control whatever I remapped it to. So you lose a lot by remapping those controls. The only exception over here is this, are these four controls here, stop all clips, master select, Q level, and master level. Those uh, only control one thing, and if you don't need to control those things, you might as well remap them. Same thing goes for these controls over here, tap tempo, nudge up and down, uh, the transport controls, the crossfader, and all of these buttons except for device on and off. The encoders are a bit different. They actually operate on independent banks. Let me show you what I mean. Right now, I'm in the pan bank, so these will control pan. I can move to the send A bank. These will control send A, send B. All right, if I don't need pan, for example, I can go in here and remap the pan encoders. I'll remap this one to global quantize. So now I can control that. But that doesn't affect the other banks. So if I go to send A, this encoder still controls uh, send A. All right, so it's just in this bank that the, the uh, function is affected which is very cool. And the device controls work the same way. You have eight banks there, though. If you add a third-party application into the mix, like Bomi's MIDI translator that could handle uh, remapping and rerouting on the fly, you could really do some interesting things. And I'm going to show you a couple examples of that, but I just want to point out that I just got the APC about a week ago, so I haven't really had a lot of time with it. And uh, what I'm going to show you is really just some stuff I threw together. It's nothing finalized. But just to give you some ideas on, on what you could do with this thing. All right, so the first thing are a couple examples of changing the default functionality. For the most part, I'm happy with the default functions, but I don't really like the way that the bank select buttons work. Uh, by default, they don't scroll. They just move by one no matter how long you hold them down for. So simple change, I just made them scroll. All right, um, then with the mute buttons, by default, they just toggle mute on or off. And that's fine. You know, there's definitely a use for that, but I also like to be able to momentarily mute stuff. So simple change, if you hold them down, they turn into momentary switches. The next two examples are a little more complex. They show how you can detach certain sections of controls and set them up to do other things. So in this case, I'm going to be uh, assigning different functions to the clip launch uh, section up here. Right now, it's doing its default function, which is launching clips. Uh, the next thing I've implemented is uh, a navigational mode that uses na uh, I'm sorry, Mac emulation and uh, keystrokes to do different things like uh, navigate in session view. You can also zoom in a range view. Um, so we, these are all view controls to control different things. Um, over here is QWERTY controls, which do different things. I can like expand or collapse groups. Oh, I forgot to say over here I can control tempo. So just a bunch of different stuff. I don't want to go through everything there. And then this next mode is uh, a mode for controlling live drum rack. And I know some people are going to balk at that because the uh, APC doesn't have velocity sensitive buttons. But I mean, there's plenty of drum machines that don't have velocity sensitive buttons. The TR-808, for example, or the machine drum. And there's even instruments that don't have velocity sensitive keyboards, like the Mini Moog. So I wouldn't say that the lack of velocity sensitivity makes it unusable for playing instruments. So I'm going to give you an example of that using Live's drum rack. The setup is pretty simple. The buttons in the center control the visible pads in the drum rack. The buttons on the side here vary the velocity. All right, and these buttons out to the side here uh, are, have a last pad function. So whichever pad you hit last gets assigned to them. So you always have two fingers at least to play each drum. All right. Um, the other cool thing about having this inside the APC is that you can use the APC's other functions in conjunction with it. So for example, I have the drum rack set up to auto select each drum. So as I'm hitting it, it comes up on the screen. So now what I can do is I can use the uh, device controls here to go through and edit each one of my drums. All right, so, you know, a basic feature, but, you know, very useful. And uh, I just want to show you real quick that I can at any time switch back to the default functions of the APC. You know, I'm not locked out of that. These are just additional modes that I've added, and you can add, you know, many more. You know what I mean? This is just a, like I say, a simple example, and I hope it uh, sheds some light on what you can do with this thing. So, enjoy it.